up, everybody? Welcome to the iProv vlog. I'm Jordan Smith, VP of Sales and Marketing, and as always, I am joined by my great co-host, Patrick Laughlin. How are you, Pat? I'm doing great, Joe. How are you? I'm doing good. Tell the audience a little bit about what we're going to be talking about today. Well, you know, we talk a whole lot about company vision, uh, you know, as sort of a, a not only a, a way to sort of lead your people uh, and build your company culture, uh, but you know that is such a big thing to uh, to an individual employee that sometimes it's hard for them to get uh, their head wrapped around where they fit in that vision. And and as our job as leaders is to show them where they fit into that vision and really to help them develop a vision for their role in achieving that vision, right? Uh, and and sort of building um, sort of daily uh, routines that focus them on achieving their part of the vision. Uh, and so once again, you know, it, it, we, we talk a lot about vision because it is that important. Uh, and, and we've sort of developed a, a, a framework for uh, how to sort of make that vision from, you know, very macro to very micro and, and individualize it. We, we call it our leadership stack. Uh, and for anybody that's not familiar with the term stack, it comes from the, uh, the software development world. And really it's just a, it's just a series of elements or, or operations or assets that literally stack one on top of the other uh, and make the, the layer underneath it that much more valuable. Uh, and so we, we, we have a really simple leadership stack that we use and, and you know, it's, uh, it, it is incredibly good at um, helping employees figure out the priorities on a day-to-day -day basis building an individual vision that builds uh, their activities uh, into uh, activities that will help achieve the company vision. I mean, absolutely. Because again, you know, it's great. We talk about vision a lot and sharing the big company vision. And But at the end of the day, we're all selfish. Like, what does that mean for me? That's great if the company makes $15 million next year, but how does that, so, helping them figure out kind of what their own personal vision is and what success for you means to them as an individual, as a department, all of those things are super important. So getting to that stack, uh, we always start off with those core values, you know? Yeah, it, it is absolutely the foundation. You, you can't go in, you can't have a culture without shared behaviors. Your core values are your shared behaviors. Yeah. yeah to have the, the best tribe or, or team that you want, uh, all of you guys need to have those same core values. These are, you can teach a lot of skills. You can't instill a core value into somebody. You yeah, know? The, the, the next thing is that clearly articulated company vision. And when I say clearly articulated, it, it has to have a guiding purpose, a reason besides money to get people involved and motivated to help you achieve it. It has to talk about what you do as a company better than anybody else in the world. Mm -hmm. uh, and there are lots of ways to sort of figure that out. You know, your, your core competencies. Yeah. Uh, it has to have a, a picture of success. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it, if there is not some like light at the end of the tunnel, nobody's gonna work uh, towards helping you achieve your vision. And it has to have a deadline um, because if, if it's not time bound, uh, there is no immediacy or urgency. And you've got to have those four things or you do not have a clearly articulated vision. Yeah, because uh, I'll tell you the truth, if you haven't discovered this already, there's Obot, there's always some other company out there willing to pay more than what you're paying that person. Yeah, absolutely. You've got to find some ways to um, not only attract, but keep the people that you want to keep um, by making sure that your core values match those things like Pat talked. Uh, the, the, the next thing that you have to have is you have to have some sort of uh, uh, org chart uh, mm -hmm. or uh, clearly laid out accountability chart. For, for those that are familiar with traction, uh, you'll be familiar with this idea of an accountability chart. It is an org chart that lists each role's responsibilities and you know what they are going to be held accountable for. They, they are incredibly powerful because at a glance, uh, you can figure out where you are in the company and what you're responsible for as it relates to the vision of the company. But you can also see your career path with the company. 
you, yeah. you know exactly what you need to learn, what you need to be focused on, and what you need to be working on to get the next job that you want within the company. That is hugely powerful from the leader's perspective because it does a lot of the career planning for you. Yep. Well, as a leader, it also tells you and your other people on your leadership team what boxes you need to fill, mm -hmm. right? Even if you're a solopreneur out there, it's just you and a couple people, don't build the org chart out to just what you have in place now with a whole bunch of tasks underneath it. But build out the positions that you, you know, want to fill. Um, so that people, once you bring in more folks, they, like Pat said, they can look at that chart and figure out where, what the possibilities are within the organization. Uh, the, the next one's critical, you know, having the right people and, and, you know, sort of having the courage to make sure that the wrong people don't get to stay for long. Uh, you know, if, if they don't match your core values, if they're not bought into your vision, if, if there's not a box for them. Um, you know, then, then you have the wrong people and you need to have the courage to, to let them move on. Uh, you know, and sometimes when I say let them move on, you have to sort of make that happen, uh, which is the absolute worst part of being a business leader is letting somebody go. But often uh, that sort of pruning is not only good, better for your company, it's better for that individual too, because they get the opportunity to go find something that's a better fit for uh, where they want to go. Uh, it, it, yeah, I mean, it, you, you have to you have to prune some time to allow things to grow. I was just about to say that. I mean, it, hopefully there's a couple of people that are watching this that have heard the same thing that we have once, you know, you talk to somebody that just wasn't a fit and down the road, they say, yeah, man, I didn't realize it at the time, but that was the best decision. I love where I'm at. And it doesn't mean that they're a bad person or it just means that you guys weren't a good fit. Uh, that that slow to hire, quick to fire mentality is one that um, even we struggle with sometimes, but we gotta, you, you, you have to take that seriously. Yeah, uh, and, and once you have the right people and you know what role they're going to play, uh, it, it's really important to have what we call a detailed job description. And this is literally a day-to-day a -day, uh, sort of even in some cases, hour by hour, uh, a document that lays out exactly what's expected of you every day. Uh, and so if there is a task that you expect to be performed every Monday by 10 a.m., it goes in that detailed job description and they get it on the first day and they know that these are the, uh, the expectations for the job that they're in. Uh, and it's laid out very clearly, uh, you know, that you know, in the morning, I expect these five things to happen. Uh, you know, in the afternoon, I expect you to do these three things. Uh, and th it leaves very little gray area. Now, th this sounds like micromanagement on paper, but the truth is once the expectations are set, this allows them to figure out where they can make improvements, uh, where they can make suggestions about how to make the job uh, better or they could perform better at the job. Uh, and it also you know, lets them have a whole lot of freedom about uh, how they plan their day to get the things that you expect them to get done. Yeah, and, and share this. This is something you need to share with them during the interview process so that they have the opportunity to see what that little kind of weekly, daily, monthly roadmap looks like too, so that those questions don't pop up after you guys have already made a commitment. Absolutely. Uh, and, and sort of once you have that detailed job description and you have expectations for tasks that you want them to complete, uh, on a daily, weekly, monthly, quarterly basis. It's really important that you have clear and publicly available processes and documentation uh, mm -hmm. because the things on that detailed job description are, you know, multi-step processes. They're checklists. They are ways that you expect jobs to be done. Uh, and if they don't have that checklist, if it just lives in your head, they are absolutely going to struggle to get the work that you want them done. And, and you're going to be frustrated. They're going to be burned out. And ultimately, the the sort of relationship is going to crumble quickly. So, m make sure those processes are are sort of built. Uh, make sure that they're publicly available somewhere, and that they are somewhere that they that it's editable by the person doing the job. Because if they're good at the job, they're going to find a better way to do it than you uh, do it, uh, and you know expect them to make improvements. Uh, that's that's the real magic. I can't say this enough 
or as clearly as we probably need to, but there is no progress without a process. If you do not give your people the process to help them succeed, then if they don't do their job properly, that's on you. Yeah, yeah. And, and if, if, if you don't see the progress, uh, you know, in developing, in developing and improving those processes, it's because they're making it up, you know? Uh, so anyway, yeah, this, this is one that we could, we could spend, you know, an hour on. Um, yeah, which, which I think we will kind of uh, coming up. So stay tuned for that episode. And that plays really nicely in the next one, which are regular reviews. Yeah, you, you, if you want uh, people to actively work on improving your company, they need feedback. Uh, you know, they need to know what they're doing right and also what they're doing that uh, that is wrong, uh, and and not wrong as in they're they're doing it a different way than you're doing it, but they're they are doing it uh, in a way that is counterproductive to the goal. That's what the negative feedback needs to be about. Not about them personally, not a, because you would do it differently, but because the way that it's happening is not going to help us achieve our goals. Yep. Uh, and and if, our, if our goals are aligned, you know, that, that's what you should be talking about. Absolutely. These reviews should be about the outcomes, what the mm -hmm. desired outcome is, what the past outcomes are, what the missed outcomes have been. That's what you should focus on on these reviews. Absolutely. Uh, and, and the last part, is you need some sort of regular meeting to review progress. Yes, uh, you know whether they are uh, quarterly reviews or yearly reviews; those are important. Those are individual. Those are based on individual performance. You need some sort of regular team meeting where you're looking at uh, the numbers uh, and you're looking at uh, issues and problems that pop up, and, and engaging the team in uh, sort of improving, uh, shifting goals where necessary. Uh, and solving problems uh, so that you can achieve your vision. And w we suggest you do that weekly, uh, but you know, we also know people that are successful doing that on a longer time scale. Absolutely, this, this is also an opportunity to see what their vision for the position and those processes that you put in place are, right? This is the yeah. time for you to open yourself up also and be vulnerable and have them bring new ideas about how to improve those processes uh, so that you guys can get better outcomes. Yep, uh, that's that's exactly right. So, um, and, and you know, it is really hard to sort of communicate all of this. So we got we got four really quick tips to sort of uh, you know talk about this with the people in your company. Number one, consider your audience. Uh, somebody that it's a senior leader in your company. Uh, you, you can have a different conversation than somebody that, you know, sort of answers the phone uh, or does sort of a, a, an entry level um, job in your company. And, and the way that they think about their day to day is very different. So think about your audience uh, and who you're talking to when you're communicating uh, not only the company vision, but the individual's uh, sort of the vision for the individual's role uh, and, and target the message to their needs. That's the second one is, is, is talk about the vision and how it relates to them. Yeah, it's important that they know where you guys want to go as an organization and what you feel like uh, is the benefit to them individually. But, um, you know, what is their personal vision? Uh, uh, you know, have them put that down, right? A lot of the times, the only time when people ask that, where do you want to be in five years question is during a job interview. Check in and see what their long-term personal vision is and relate your success to that. And it's gonna make a world of difference. Yeah, and uh, lay out action steps for growth yep. uh, for these folks too, you know. Make sure they know that if they uh, achieve the goals that you guys have set out, uh, have set up together, uh, that they will grow inside of your company. Uh, and make it clear that, you know, if they want growth, here's how you get it, and here are the steps that they need to take in order to, to get the growth um, that they want. That's how you align goals and that's how you uh, achieve big things as a company. Mm -hmm. and, and that and last step is, um, you know, kind of engage those emotions. We talked about having them put down what their personal vision is, but, you know, in sales all the time, we say sales is a transference of emotion. Well, you are selling your vision. You are selling the fact that this is where we want to go and I cannot do it without you. So, so, so don't be opposed to those personal or emotional conversations 
especially when they're talking about what their individual goals are for them and their families. I mean, that's a very, it's a very personal conversation that you're stepping into. So don't be afraid to make it personal. Obviously there's boundaries, but you know, make it an emotional conversation. That's okay. That's how you're going to get the most out of them. Absolutely. So, uh, you know, that's how you take a company vision and translate it into uh, an individual uh, vision for uh, roles at your company and how you really get uh, every team member engaged in helping you achieve that bigger company vision. Absolutely. Let us know if you've got any questions, like, comment, subscribe. We went through a lot of steps there. So check out the show notes. Um, leave us a comment. Let us know what, 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 if you've got any, anything that you do that we left out or, or kind of skimmed over. Love to know from you guys, the business community, um, different techniques and tactics that you use in order to express your vision uh, and make sure that you've got kind of the, the right people in the right position in your organization. Love to hear from you. Until next time, thanks, Pat. Peace, peeps.